May the triple gem bless you. A warm welcome once again to the Mahadev. They say it's always better to light at least one lamp rather than cursing the prevailing darkness. So that's exactly what we are going to do through the Mahadev. So as you all know, the Mahadev is the program where we introduce to you an expert of a particular field and lead a discussion with him or her with regard to Buddhism. So today we have a very interesting theme or very interesting topic that is self-realization. I repeat, self-realization. To discuss that topic with us today, we have a very important resource personnel of the country. He is none other than Mr. Vipula Vanigasekara. He is the Director General of Sri Lanka Tourist Board as well as the General Manager of Sri Lanka Convention Bureau. So we warmly welcome you to the Mahadev. Well, while introducing uh, to our viewers all over the world, I just said that our topic today is self-realization. Well, it was a topic chosen by the resource person itself. So I would like to ask you first of all, what made you select this particular topic, self-realization? Right, and um, thank you very much for inviting me for this program. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I chose this topic uh, is because the word self-realization is the very core message in Buddhist philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, if one were to uh, describe what differentiates Buddhism from other religions, and if one were to describe the definition and, and what the Buddhism expects the people to do and what mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the enlightenment that the Buddhism describes, it all revolves around this core theme which is uh, the self-realization. Mm -hmm. Now if you ask people uh, to describe and, and define Buddhism, mm -hmm. you will probably uh, hear so many versions. Mm -hmm. And uh, from virtues to, you know, reaching from sila to samadhi to prajna. To very theoretical explanations perhaps. Uh, yes. Yeah. And the, the Buddhism places a kind of a challenge before mm -hmm. you. Uh, and the very challenge is the self-realization. Mm -hmm. So, when you speak about enlightenment and, and it is you and none other than you yourself has to, uh, to see this truth and realize this enlightenment, mm -hmm. then what precedes uh, the enlightenment is a self-realization. Mm -hmm. And then what precedes the self-realization is some kind of examination. And, and examination is also preceded by uh, analysis. So all what you get uh, through Dhamma study uh, are information, data, by way of sermons. You can study sutras, you can study Abhidhamma. And yet the final answer lies um, around this self-realization. Mm -hmm. And that is why I believe that uh, self-realization is the key word in uh, Buddhist philosophy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so now the Buddha says to seek peace from within and not from whatever is outside. Can you elaborate on this point which well, the Buddha made? Yes. Now, when you speak about peace, you must um, elaborate what this peace is all about. Now, if it is the happiness in in, in material terms, mm -hmm. then of course people seek happiness from outside mm -hmm. objects, your ambitions, mm -hmm. to be someone, to achieve goals in, in, in life. All these things uh, you, can, you can reach uh, your, your goals from outside objects. But Buddhism essentially tells you that this peace lies within you, so you have to, it's an inward looking exercise. And that is why Buddha said that 
you cannot possibly have this peace from from outside mm -hmm. now happiness uh, it's one side of a coin because if you speak about the vicissitudes of life it, mm -hmm. the coin turns all the time yeah and if you seek pleasure the dukkha is always there with it like the other side mm -hmm. of the coin. Mm -hmm. Now that is in material terms, but the peace is a permanent peace which which you see and which you experience, and that is in you. Mm -hmm. That is why they say that, I heard this recently in one of the sermons, that uh, it's beautifully said, it mm -hmm. says, what you are looking for is where you are looking from. Can you repeat what that? What you are looking for mm -hmm. is already where you are looking from. Okay. So that explains that all you need to do is to do your analysis within. Yeah. And the peace arises within. And the realization also arises within. Okay. Now, from just what you said, now sir, like we have heard that the Buddha's teachings takes one from being mundane to be supramundane. Now, what is your opinion about it? The, this is the theoretical explanation with regard to what they say from Laukika yeah. to Lokottara. And Laukika, they describe all what you do in this life, and Lokottara is uh, supramundane, is the life hereafter. Uh, this could be uh, a misleading because then, then there is a a connotation that yes you have to do something in this life and then whatever you have to achieve it comes uh, in, 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 in a life hereafter and, and that probably takes all your chances from, from, from this life yeah. whereas uh, Buddha himself said that don't live in the past because the past doesn't exist mm -hmm. and don't live in the future either because the future is also an illusion so all you got is this present moment. And if you are speaking about an enlightenment, self-realization, that may occur on a future date, but it will occur in the now of a future date. Okay. You see? Yeah. So all you have is the present moment, and everything mm -hmm. else is an illusion. Okay. And if um, this is understood, one tends to look at this mundane and supramundane uh, uh, aspects in a different manner mm -hmm. because there is perhaps no point in you know even thinking about what you are going to gain in lives to come which you don't even know yeah. because you cannot uh -huh. predict even what will happen in the next one mm -hmm. hour uh, it is only in your thought mm -hmm. it's only in your thinking but what will really happen the situation thereafter could be totally different so all you got is this very present moment so in the light of that uh, I suppose if you do not look at it from theoretical sense, yeah. yes, you have a samsaric journey and, and you have the vicissitudes that you have to go through, all that yeah. may be true. But the fact remains is that, that this present moment is the moment all you have. Okay. Now, now, talking about being in the present moment, sir, how many of us do you think are actually in the present moment? not be misunderstood. <laughs> yeah. uh, <clears throat> well, when you say present moment, okay, just eat and live and yeah. <clears throat> be happy. It's, it's not uh, what I meant. When it you has say, more depth. Yes. Now, uh -huh. it doesn't mean that, okay, you plan mm -hmm. your work for tomorrow. Okay. And then you study for an examination. All right. And mm -hmm. then <clears throat> you have to decide what you're going to do in a week's time. Now, it is the thinking, yeah. which is a body and mind coordination which happens anyway yes that is required and 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 your consciousness does it whether you like it or not yeah but if you really speak about the thoughts mm -hmm. with which that you live every mm -hmm. day perhaps 90 percent or even 99 percent of the thoughts are not really required although you are indulged okay. uh, mm -hmm. this entertaining mm -hmm. these thoughts because the thoughts they used to call yeah. that these are begging thoughts or okay. they, these thoughts come to you looking for food. All right. Because, mm. uh, and the mm. food is your acknowledgement. Mm. Your, you embrace these thoughts and you are completely lulled into a, a, a mm. sphere of some, something which doesn't exist. Most of your time, if you ask yourself, you are either li living in the past or living in the future. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you are living in the future through the past because you have a past experience.
Hmm. And none of these things exist. So if okay. you allow your... Now let me give you an example. Now uh -huh. I'm, I'm carrying my, my daughter's son. Okay. He's a baby. And uh, this morning when I was bringing him down the stairs, and every time, you know, when you, when you come down the stairs, every time I take a step down, and he's just four months, and he, he holds me as if he was going to fall, okay. you know. Yeah. Now he knows that he's held and he's in safe hands mm -hmm. and yet every time I take a step down he holds. Now where does he get that intelligence? Mm -hmm. It's a body and mind coordination which is there anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like, you know, so if you go to eat, you know, you eat what the body wants and not what the mind wants and that will resolve a lot of problems, you know, with regard to <laughs> overweight, True. with regard to your shape or something. And it's a, it's a different way of thinking. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's another way of thinking about, uh, about, about living and, and living in the present moment. Yes. Now, I think, thank you very much for that idea, sir, because, uh, folks, I think it's really important living in the present moment because now is the time. The present moment is what we should spend time in because the present moment only creates the future. So you, you have to... Just be in the present moment and not living, not wasting your time living in the past or planning or rather in the future. As uh, you said, it's an illusion uh, to be correct. So, uh, so now listening to you, I feel now the Buddha's teaching, it, does it not sound very complicated as it's written in all these scriptures? Is it that simple? Um, let me put it this way. Now we have some thousands of sutras yeah. that uh, Buddha has preached mm -hmm. at various uh, stages of his life. And as you know, he went in search of people, walked thousands and thousands of miles uh, looking for people who, uh, would, whom he thought would understand this philosophy mm -hmm. and benefit mm -hmm. from it. And then you also have this Abhidhamma in scriptures which explains the analysis of the body uh, and, and, and mind. Um, and then if one gets the impression that you need to acquire all this knowledge, mm -hmm. knowledge uh, to, to, to go somewhere or attain a Magapala, mm -hmm. uh, in which case one needs to again go back to the Buddha's lifetime where yeah. people like uh, Sopaka yeah. or the Sanne, son of Anepindu <coughs> or even Magandhi's father mm -hmm. wouldn't have attained any stage because mm -hmm. they listened to Buddha only for a few few minutes. Yeah. Now, if, you, if I may relate uh, this story where when Magandhi's father brought his daughter in front of Buddha yeah. and the mother also followed and then Mark and his father introduced the daughter, mm -hmm. and she was the most beautiful woman mm -hmm. uh, who lived at that time, and, and said, uh, um, Buddha, he is my daughter. So Buddha looked at the mother was behind, and he said, which one is your daughter? Yeah. So he said, uh, Buddha, and this is my daughter, because you know, she's young and mother is old. Yeah. And Ask again, which one is your daughter? So, yeah. Maga and his father got the message immediately. Mm -hmm. a few minutes that mm -hmm. you know, because he did the analysis, yeah. he had the intelligence, um, the intelligence part of your consciousness, which tells you yes, it is only a time factor because yeah. the body, it, it decays anyway. So this beauty that you are talking mm -hmm. about, it, it changes all the time. But we tend to think that tomorrow it's going to be the same, and day after <laughs> it's going to be. Yeah. But but it is changing whether you like it or not. So it is not permanent. And therefore, you know, it's a very, very simple thing. Now, mm -hmm. similarly, you know, he, he has given so many examples where people have understood in a in, in, in few minutes because all mm -hmm. you need is a little bit of intelligence and the analytical skills to understand mm -hmm. what it is. So therefore, to answer your question, you know, yeah. do you need to go through this tedious exercise mm -hmm. and then it's a sansaric journey and you have to wait for years and years to finally reach the nirvana? I, I don't think so because you know any any philosophy or any religion should if you if you try it yeah. when you drink a glass of water mm -hmm. it uh, resolves the mm -hmm. so somewhat uh, dhamma if you if you
practice it or if you, whatever you do, you should be able to see the results immediately. And that's what the Buddhism is all about. It says you do this, you will see the results immediately. It's not, you know, you are sort of suddenly going to Devaloka or something, but True. you see the mm -hmm. results immediately. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you know, this, this, um, the mission impossible is mm -hmm. not, not really true. Yeah. Uh, now that you told all that, sir, I remember before this discussion, uh, we had a discussion prior to this Dhammahade program. And uh, you told me uh, about your personal experience. You told me that you knew uh, when you were in your 20s, you knew a lot of the Dhamma and you could remember a lot of things about the Dhamma having uh, been born to a traditional Buddhist family. But then as time went by, uh, you said like uh, you tend to forget those. And later on you realized that, uh, well, it's not that important to remember all that. Would you like to relate it to our viewers? I think it's really important. Yes. Of course, the interest to explore mm -hmm. what is taught in Buddhism, it didn't occur to me yesterday, but even when I was in the 20s, we were doing a lot of studies. I used mm -hmm. to visit um, this Maitri Hall in Bambalapiti. Every okay. Saturday, they used to have this uh, Dhamma discussion, okay. and I used to listen to um, scholars like Electro. And, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Tudor Sena Nayaka, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and learn uh, a, a lot of Buddhism at that time. I used to listen to this uh, Buddhist forum. There was a Buddhist channel. I don't remember now which mm -hmm. channel it was. And then memorize a lot of sutras. And I loved to, you know, speak on various subjects. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then, of course, there was a time that I lived abroad uh, for some time. Um, and I met a, a quite a number of um, uh, people who live in the Western world. And uh, of course, they have listened to Dhamma, they have been practicing Dhamma. And when you speak to them, yeah. well, their knowledge about sutras and Abhidhammas and, and, and it was very little. But whatever they had to say, there's a lot of in depth uh, in. in in what they have discovered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I realized that, you know, like these, some of course haven't had the opportunity of even reading a, a, a Dhamma book, but they themselves have, you know. Okay. Um, some of course couldn't convey very effectively, but nevertheless, if you look at their lifestyles and what they say, there's so much of Maitri, there's so much of compassion. Mm -hmm. there, is, there isn't a single word like, you know, we, we say, Speaking about Buddha, rahasing what you know, mm -hmm. some that that kind of um, um, like embodiments of virtues, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can see in them. Mm -hmm. And then you know, where is the knowledge? So you you see the difference between the knowledge and wisdom. Yeah. So then eventually, when I returned, um, of course you are you are you are quite busy with your day to day. You have. Um, you have mm, a, a, a job and then you have to make a living, so you do not have that much of time for this. But I met a young uh, Buddhist monk some three years ago uh, at, a, at a, a function where he was invited to give a sermon. And then after hearing that, I asked my friend who invited me as to where this monk came from. Then he to find out he's actually living close to uh, where I live. Mm -hmm. So I went to see him and I had a discussion with him for a short while and and he is the one who described this self, the artificial self that we have created. So you actually have two persons in you. Okay. One is your, your beingness mm -hmm. uh, and the other one is the self that you yourself have created, which has a designation, which has a name, which has mm -hmm. a position in the society, which has aspirations, mm -hmm. ambitions, you know, all that. And he said, drop all that and then ask yourself who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, it makes you think differently, you know, okay. you remove yeah. all that, all yeah. these labels, mm -hmm. you know, positions. Mm -hmm. And you even forget that you are a man or a woman, mm -hmm. you know. And then ask yourself this question. Uh, and that gives you some kind of a, a, another way to look at it. So most interesting thing at, that happened at this discussion was I asked him, uh, I said, uh, Venerable Sir, can I, 
come back and see you because I like this discussion and I think I learned a lot, mm -hmm. you know, much more than <laughs> what I used to learn uh, long years ago through okay. the books. And he said, yes, of course, you can come at any time. But I'm afraid I have to tell you that I will tell you the same thing. I have not go to end. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I suppose the message is simple. And yeah. it, it cannot mm -hmm. be. Uh, mm -hmm. And I saw in him. This so it was a life-changing experience for you. It is. It mm -hmm. is. And you start thinking differently. Yeah. Because this is very important. And this is one of the reasons I believe why Buddha had to use a different technique. To, <laughs> after all, he was the greatest orator ever lived mm -hmm. if you look at you know how he mm -hmm. used the language uh, to convince people on certain things and dispel their their perceptions notions and um, and that is because each one has to think in his or her own way mm -hmm. to to understand this mm -hmm. okay so thank you very much for sharing that experience with our viewers sir and uh, now talking about the path leading to Nibbana or the uh, goal of all Buddhist Nirvana or Nibbana or enlightenment. Now the path leading to it is taught to be Sila, Samadhi and Prajna. Now this might you know make some of our Buddhists think or believe that you know cultivating this Sila, Samadhi and Prajna may take a long period in sansara might be eons, but um, does that mean that we cannot attain Nibbana or enlightenment within this life itself? I, I don't know whether it is correct to compartmentalize, you know, okay, sila and then yeah. you go through that and then you <coughs> move on to samadhi and then, and then finally it's prajna. I do not know if that is of course, in theoretical terms, when someone has to put it down in writing, um, 